Unlike woodwinds and strings, vibrato is relatively seldom used in most settings for brass playing. Um, it does come in on occasion, though, and because of that, it's important that we teach students how to do it appropriately. A tendency that students will have is just to shake the instrument as they play. And while this certainly is a visual effect we see in jazz music, um, it's going to be the least commonly used um, type of vibrato and the one that's actually most likely to cause damage because of the pressure done on the face. In most cases, we utilize what's called jaw vibrato. Um, and when we're using jaw, jaw vibrato, um, this is, we utilize just a solo movement of the lower jaw and the tongue. Ya, 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 to be able to create a variance of sound. We should think about vibrato always as a lowering of pitch rather than a raising of pitch. So we set the embouchure uh, for the higher end of the vibrato and allow it to fall into that lower one and return back to that normal playing position. When we teach vibrato, we teach vibrato starting very slowly and we want to establish a pulse. I'm going to set a metronome at quarter note equals 72. Um, and then we're going to play with a very non-characteristic vibrato and then it's going to be very slow, um, making it sound very wrong. What we're listening for is consistency of where the highs and the lows are. When we speed this up, um, it'll sound like a more natural vibrato. set my aperture for that upper pitch in the vibrato, allowing it to fall down. Now once we speed that up, um, in real, in, uh, as students become comfortable with it, um, it's going to become a more natural sounding vibrato and something that's um, aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> It's important to make sure that that vibrato is regular and consistent, keeping the same rate of oscillation as well as the same um, range of oscillation, oscillation as we go through it. <laughs> 